Hi there, it's Lloyd Alvarez again for AETouch.com. I am going to show you guys how to create some fantastic chromatic aberration. Um, a few of you very astute readers noticed that in the cinematic open redux piece, there was some funky stuff happening over in the edges. You can see it uh, here at the end as well. Uh, let's see, look around here. See that, how it's separating the colors? Yes, uh, you guys definitely do have a keen eye. Um, and um, instead of just doing a quickie, I figured I'd, uh, I'd do a in more in-depth sort of investigation as to how I did it. This is just a little nice finishing touch. And as you can see, I think it brings a little bit of a, I don't know, uh, emotion to the piece and also you know chromatic aberration um, actually well let's take a look here at the piece um. so Clearly, I am hamming it up here, uh, just making it really obvious. But uh, let's uh, let's go to Wikipedia, shall we, and look up what chromatic aberration is. Well, ah, that's a lot of boring stuff. Uh, let's better look at an image. This is really uh, what happens. The, I think the reason um, I added it to cinematic Redux and the reason I added it in general is because this is something, it's a natural phenomenon that happens um, with lenses because, uh, let's take a look at another graph, um, a lens bends light, yeah, and uh, towards the edges of the lens, sometimes, and uh, cheaper lenses, I guess, have more of this problem, the RGB channel split at slightly different angles so that essentially towards the edges you have this... Uh, sort of RGB sort of split happening. And as you can see, it happens more towards the edges, less towards the center. And uh, what we are going to do is try and replicate this digitally. I know that the last piece, um, well, as you can see from the preview, this uh, should look familiar. Um, the last piece was all about doing the stuff sort of, you know, outside of After Effects. Well, now I'm gonna show you how to create something that, you know, you could capture naturally and if you can find some old lenses that give you some nice chromatic aberration that would be fantastic and I would highly encourage that you that you go that route uh, but I'm going to show you how to uh, essentially do the same thing in After Effects. So uh, let's start here with the uh, animating old school type and <clears throat> We're actually going to do this in 8-bit. I know the last time I did it in 32-bit. Um, this works very nicely in 8-bit. So for the uh, sake of speed and simplicity, but uh, you can totally do this, by the way, in 32-bit. And you will definitely get some uh, benefits from doing that because the way add works in 32-bit is much nicer. And this totally takes advantage of the add uh, transfer mode. So if you want to you know, do this right and... I would highly encourage you to do so. I would do it in 32-bit. But for this demo, I'm gonna do it in 8-bit. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is duplicate this animating old school. I'm gonna turn off the sound so there's only in one. And I'm gonna get a plugin called Shift Channels. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the red from See here, red from red, green from green. Well, I'm going to take the green from red and the blue from red so that all three are from red. And I'm going to rename this red. But notice how it turns white. Hmm, what's going on? Well, we're going to find out in a second. And then, so we're going to duplicate this one, and this one will be blue. And so, therefore, this one has um, all of them will be from the blue channel. Notice how it was kind of blue there for a second, but now it's white again. What's going on? Don't know. Let's uh, duplicate it one last time. And as you guessed, it's going to be green. Green, green, green. So you're thinking, how am I going to get this to look right? Mm, that was not so good. No. All right. So the thing is, we need to now, uh, now that we have essentially these three 
channel separated essentially like each layer is just each individual channel um, for reference we could have grabbed this and gone here right and looked at the red channel and then the green channel and then the blue channel but notice how they're also all black and white by the way notice how the blue has a lot less light than the green no, notice how much brighter the green is this is why uh, cheap video cameras um, have much better uh, luminance than uh, chroma um, fidelity because they just pump up the green channel because that's where luminance comes from and then just sort of neglect the blue and red channel and uh, usually those get very noisy uh, anyway uh, I digress so um, so if I were to take all three of these channels and just make them an add transfer mode uh, it just gets really bright but it doesn't look like uh, our original which was this so how do we get it into the original? Well, we need to then, once we've separated this into each channel, we need to go ahead and tint it, that channel. And we're gonna do that with the tint plugin. And what I need to do, so this is the white, I need to tint the white a perfect red. And the way I'm gonna get that is by basically just saying red 255, which is basically full red in 8-bit. Um, but then I'm gonna make zero for the other two. So this is a pure red, okay? So I'm gonna copy that, and now I'm gonna paste it into the blue channel. And now this one, of course, I need a pure blue, so I'm just gonna do zero for red, and then 250, oh, sorry, 255 for blue, all right? Now, is, now we're starting to get something interesting. And then finally, in the green one, I'm gonna paste, and I'm gonna get a 255 green and then zero blue and so now as you can see all three of these channels together in add look just like the original wow a lot of work but what's cool is because now we have these separated I can just move the channel and you can see the beauty here look at that what's really great is that they all add up to white when they're perfectly lined up so, as you probably learned in science class, white is the addition of all the colors, which is why we use the add transfer mode. And if you uh, separate it into RGB, they will um, all add up back to what they were originally were. It's very fantastic. But um, there's one other thing that we need to uh, pay attention here. Where's our diagram? Is that notice how it was sort of separated as it got towards the outside. So it's not like just that I can just do this, even though that looks pretty cool. Um, what we want to do is we actually want to have it sort of distort towards the outside. And we're going to use that with another filter called Optics Compensation. Notice, by the way, all these plugins that I'm using are all 32 bit, especially in CS4. So again, if you want to do this in 32-bit, I would highly encourage it. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to have the red channel uh, distort the most. So I'm going to copy this over here, paste it into the red channel, and let's just solo it for now so we can see what's happening. So when you distort this, it um, see how it distorts in? We want it to actually distort out, so I'm just going to reverse the lens distortion so that you see here it kind of distorts out towards the outside so I'm gonna set this to 100 now again I'm sort of hamming this effect up so that it's for you know added dramatic um, effect in the cinematic redux I did it very very subtly which is why I was surprised you guys noticed so you know you would do much less but for now we'll do a hundred and then I'll just copy it in the red and then in the blue we'll do 90 don't forget to reverse it. And then finally in the green, we'll do 80. And don't forget to reverse it. So now, essentially, notice how in the center, it's, uh, let's go to another frame here, yeah. See how in the center, it's actually added it, but then as it starts getting out towards the sides, it starts distorting more and more, sort of to mimic what's happening here. All right. Um, now, <clears throat> another thing we could do is we could, um, or popular things that people like to do with this effect is you can uh, blur each channel uh, independently so for example if I were to add a little blur to the red channel uh, where is my blur here we go 
box blur, my favorite box blur. You know, um, I don't know, like people like to do that, uh, blur each channel independently. If you wanna do that, one thing I would recommend is tying all your blurs to a control layer. So just do a new null, and we'll call this uh, chromatic aberration control. And uh, let's do some expression controls, slider control. We'll call this red blur and then duplicate it and then call this B blur or actually G blur. And then B blur. And so then um, we're gonna reveal here E for effects and then just uh, open these up. So if I option click in here, I can write an expression and all I have to do here is tie the blur radius to the slider. And notice how here it just says R blur. So if I just copy this, copy, and then uh, well actually I'm gonna copy the whole effect I believe because I don't think I've put it in here. Yeah, I'm just gonna paste it. So now I do this. So if I hit EE, all I have to do now is edit this expression so that instead of R blur, it just says, because this is the blue channel, so B blur, right? And then paste it into the green one, EE. By EE, I mean I hit the letter E twice quickly in the keyboard. And then this will be uh, G blur, okay? So now I can conveniently adjust the blur from here for each channel independently. And then of course, um, while we're at it, right? You're thinking, we could do uh, R distort. Distort, and then B dist or G distort. Let's put this over here. And then uh, B distort, distort. And then um, we'll just apply that to the optics compensation. So if I again hit um, option here to set it, I'm gonna, this is the red channel, so I'm gonna reveal the R distort, close that up, and just drag. So just drag this over to R distort, and then you sort of copy this, copy. So now we go into the blue and then put a expression there on the field of view and then paste and just change that to B distort. And then the green one, we can do uh, paste and that'll be G distort. Now of course, um, all these values now are set to zero. By the way, notice how just blurring the channels what effect that creates. Um, so I, I believe we had a uh, hundred on the R distort and then 90 and then 80. If you wanted to be tricky, you could uh, easily uh, link all these together so that, uh, you know, for example, uh, just give you a real quickie. Instead of actually entering an amount into B and G distort, I could just put an expression here and then have it look at the R distort, right? So I just pick whip the R distort. And then I say, uh, if, if the R distort is 100, then, and this is 80, I, I basically subtract 20%, right? So I could say, or, or sorry, it's 80% of, of that. So just say times 0 0.8, which is like saying 80% um, of the R distort value. And then I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna pay, uh, do an expression into G distort. And then, so this one then is 90%, right? So, What's cool about that is that now I can actually just animate the R distort and see notice how it will actually animate the other ones appropriately. So if I go to zero, let's zero out the blur here. 
Zero blur. Uh, blur, blur, blur is all zero. Yeah, okay, so now as I animate the R distort, see, you can actually create this cool animation of it sort of coming into focus. You know, I don't know. I kind of like what's happening up in here as well. It's pretty cool, huh? All right, um, and then, um, <clears throat> let's see, let's take a look at what I did. Um, I sort of uh, did a few little tricks, just uh, had it animating, sort of jumping up and down to, you know, to do this kind of stuff, essentially, just even though we have all this stuff, you can still animate each sort of channel like this, right? Which is not what you would see in, 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 in a real lens, but because we are in After Effects, we can do whatever we want. Um, so, <clears throat> if we look at the piece, I, I basically had sort of just different little tricks happening um, to the beat, so... So for example, um, you know, here I had him sort of animating in position away and then, you know, here's just sort of the lens thing. I also, um, again, here separating them uh, and, you know, you can do this. Um, you could do things, for example, if you just wanted to sort of have a quick auto animation, just put a wiggle position. Um, so actually, let's bring these back. So option command F brings everything back to where it was. Um, if you just put a wiggle expression, so wiggle, and then like say one, once per second or one frame per second, and then say wiggle about, I don't know, 20, 30, let's wiggle it a lot. And just copy this, copy that, and paste it onto, actually, you, you only wanna do it onto two channels. You don't wanna do all three, cause then it gets a little crazy. But uh, just doing that will sort of, uh, <clears throat> have it all kind of all going kind of wacky crazy and let's just take a look real quick so you can see how there it's kind of like the channels are swimming and then if you want to just keep doing that but you want to keep it focused then just duplicate a, uh, a normal version so here we'll put this at the top so if I'm gonna so uh, turn this on, so just I just have uh, you know a non-separated normal layer. Just put a um, a mask on it in the center, and just feather it so that even though you have all this crazy stuff happening, you still have something that's focused in the center. And then, you know, you could dissolve that in and out depending on how much you want to, uh, to reveal the effect or not reveal the effect. Um, so, again, not realistic, <laughs> but just showing you how. And <clears throat> you could do it the other way around. You could have it inverted so that only in the center, you know, it kind of does this. Uh, I don't know, that looks kind of interesting. So anyway, there you have it, uh, how to do your own chromatic aberration. I hope that, uh, I hope you exercise restraint, don't do what I just did, and just do it as a subtle touch, um, what I did with the, uh, Oh, I don't know where it went. The uh, cinematic redux. You know, just keep it mellow like this towards the edges and just have it be something that you feel more than that you see. And I think it'll have a much, much better effect. Okay, uh, we're almost done here. La the last thing I wanted to show you, um, even though I just told you to keep it mellow, if you really want to ham it up, the, one of the reasons that we took all the channels and then tinted the channel, uh, because for example, another way, a simpler way to do this is if I just turn off the tint, and then instead of taking all the channels from these channels, you just turn off the channels that you don't want. So for example, for the green, 
I just go full off here, right? And blue here, uh, turn off the tint, and just take blue from blue, but then turn off full off for these channels. And then that would be green, so full off, full off, and tint. So notice how that's essentially the same thing. So you're thinking, well, why did we go through all the trouble of adding the tint? Well, that's so that you can further mess with it. So let's see. There we go. All right, so of course, what you could do now is, and here's a little tip. If you reveal the color here, if you hold down the command key or the control key and scrub, sorry, uh, is it the alt key? Oh yeah, sorry, the option and alt key. Um, so notice how if I go left to right, I change the hue, and if I go up and down, I change the saturation. So you can, you know, do all this really cool sort of scrubbing. But um, anyway, so what you could do is, uh, as you can see here, this is a bad frame to uh, let's see. Here we go. So by changing these colors, so let's go back to red, uh, 255. So by changing these colors, I'm going to scrub this a little bit. Um, you can, you know, get new and different effects. So if you wanted to, to use this for a slightly different effect than just standard chromatic aberration, um, by setting up the project this way, let's go, uh, I don't know. Um, so, you know, uh, you get another sort of more interesting looking effect here. All right, so that's it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. This is Lloyd Alvarez for A Tuts. Until the next one.